navigating all the different challenges of what it means to be a startup founder and move abroad from your home country to go to textiles and to just be part of the atmosphere. The things that help me the most as an entrepreneur, the problem solving attitude. Um, especially when you're learning engineering, you you have a mission, you have like to solve something. Welcome to the podcast. So today we're joined by Gal from Boost. So hi Gal, would you be able to share a bit about how the team of Boost met exactly and how did you guys come up with this idea of Boost? Yeah, for sure. Um, so my name is Galbert Delay. I'm the COO of Boost. Three of us met um, at Reichman University. It's a private university back in Israel. Uh, we studied different topics. I studied computer science and entrepreneurship. And this program was especially for uh, students that desires to build their own venture. Um, and it was uh, a yearly program uh, helping um, those students to understand how to build a startup from scratch, from a concept idea to actually execution. Um, so we met there. Uh, 20 students were chosen for this program. Um, it's funded by Samzel. And when we met there in the in the program, we needed to decide, of course, the founder. So we got connected, understand it. We like working with each other got to know each other a bit better and see if our values connect in order to work together. And when we decided to work together as founders, we started the ideation about what's the idea of, the, of our startup. And we start searching and um, investigating a lot of different topics and markets. Um, and then we decided to work in a specific market uh, and M&A, mergers and acquisitions, um, and helping people to buy and sell businesses. Um, this is what we do in the company. Um, we mainly started in e-commerce. This is our first target market. And we were fascinated by uh, e-commerce. I worked in my previous job with a lot of U.S. banks and e-commerce brands, and I helped them with solutions, technical solutions to help them with their user experience. My CEO was connected also to the e-commerce space. He worked at Wix as a manager. Um, and when you start ideation about M&A in e-commerce, it just... We, we got connected, we got excited. We, we saw the new market that just um, was built in the last few years and we want to create better solutions in the space. Um, and this is how we started the company. Yeah, firstly, I wanted to say a big hats off to you for navigating all the different challenges of what it means to be a startup founder and to even just move abroad from your home country to go to textiles and to just be part of the atmosphere there. And yeah, that's something I wanted to touch on as well, like further on as we go along in the podcast. But now I would yeah. like to kind of pivot into your personal story of building your company from engineer to entrepreneur. And what were those kind of skills, like the tangible skills, soft skills, any kind of skills that you had to learn to become this entrepreneur and to go jump, make that pivot and just jump into it. I, I was a, an engineer, I worked at IBM. I was a data engineer um, and security. And then I changed uh, my position. I worked at WalkMe and I helped with the um, solution. I created um, tech solutions for big enterprise and e-commerce brand. When I learned computer science and during my degree, I, I started working and I saw um, the skills that I uh, developed during those years uh, working as employee. I think the biggest skills or the things that helped me the most as entrepreneur was the problem solving attitude. Um, especially when you're learning engineering, you you have a mission, you have like a, a deadline to solve something and you're not taking no for an answer. You're not going to quit if product isn't working or the code is not working. So you need to search, you need to iterate, you need to learn a lot. You, you learn how to learn by yourself. Um, and I think this from my engineering time, I think this is, was um, the biggest advantage after that is to become entrepreneur. As, as entrepreneur, as the same as engineering, like you need to solve the problem. The problem that you choose to solve in the world, in the space that you choose, there you will experience a lot of difficulties and a lot of uh, issues and challenges. So you need to have this mindset of, the problem solving uh, person and not to quit. And I think this is the biggest thing, not to quit and stay in the game until you solve um, the little problems in the way, the little challenges. I think this is, was one of the most important things that I learned. Yeah, that's great that you learned about, you know, how to not take no for an answer, how to be 
self learning and how to just kind of immerse yourself in what you're doing so my next question is kind of could you share a bit about your israel military experience so what was that like and how did that mindset of being an israeli military experience translate into you becoming a better founder perhaps and yeah anything you could share on that yes of course in israel uh you have to do military service for women it was two years and i was a deputy company commander so i managed a company with 200 100 soldiers and 20 commanders um, and officers and I enjoyed so much how to what's the biggest responsibility I think I ever had in my life uh, even before I study a degree and the biggest things I learned about it is responsibility of something that is bigger than me the company the military I had people that I need to keep them safe and I think it, in general it was one of the hardest period in my life and later on helped me as entrepreneurs my confidence um trust my guts I own all of it I think for my army service since I was a little girl I tried to develop this confidence in me and the army service just boosted it in order for me to feel confidence with myself with my skill um and now I can see it as entrepreneur I'm always involving that I'm always trying to improve it but I definitely own it to my army service your army service had such an impact on your life so my next question is so what's your take on israel so you had mentioned that israel is a big place for startups and in the pre-convo and uh this is one topic that you wanted to discuss so uh what's the israeli startup and visa ecosystem like and what are the accelerators in place that help founders and like anything you can share any advice for founders as well yeah of course um i think israeli um startup market is amazing and we see a lot of startups here in israel and not just startups big companies as well um we, we we call it the startup nation and because because we can see a lot of companies IPO'd and a lot of startups creating every year. It all happened just because I think there is a huge um, ecosystem and network of startups helping each other out. There's a lot of VCs here in Israel, um, micro VCs as well, um, universities VCs that help uh, entrepreneurs to create those initial ideas from a concept to a company. And there are a lot of support from mentors, other companies that give funds to other companies as well and do a kind of um, angel investment and micro VC. So we see a huge network in Israel. Um, as I can see and learning here, uh, we, for example, as in the company, we had um, Accelerator back in Israel, as I mentioned, in the university, uh, founded by Samzal. Then we joined Accelerator the, uh, of Amazon, AWS. Um, also, it, it it's a global accelerator, but we have another one here in Israel. Um, and also there is a tech stars here in Israel. We as a team went to New York, but there is a Israeli based, Tel Aviv based um, tech stars. Um, it just show how much, you know, how much we're a small country, but how much we care about the startups. And we see a lot of people supporting the startup nation here. And I think because of that, of being an entrepreneur in Israel, being a startup founder, leveraging all this network and the people and communicate with them, going to events, going to meetups, um, ask founders how they fundraise, how they hire for the first employee. I think as entrepreneurs, it's, it's so easy to do it here in Israel. Um, and I think we see in Israel main main markets here. We see cybersecurity, we see fintech, we see a lot in SaaS. Um, we see a lot of uh, those kind of companies in here in Israel. Um, I think those are the special market of Israel. We see a lot of great companies in the Israeli market, and but it still have a room from other companies uh, to start it here in Israel because of this huge network of people. So. Um, I recommend for people, uh, if they're in Israel, Israeli, the starter, starting their startup to before getting the idea, before getting to, you know, execution to, to check, um, for mentors, to check for the accelerators, micro VCs, um, get connected, talk to them even before you, you starting the path, because when you're going to continue, you want their help during the process. So to get connected before, I think it's pretty helpful. So you made a point where you mentioned about Techstars. So what's your advice for founders applying to Techstars? I know it's kind of a brutal and it's got a very low acceptance rate. So what's your advice for people <laughs> who want to kind of get into Techstars and, you know, make their mark and do something out there? I think few of my advice, advices for 
um, people that um, want to apply to Techstars is first uh, come with a team, the right team, find the founders that you uh, communicate well, and you know that you want to work with them in the next few years on the startup. Because if you're not having those dynamic in the team, I think they will see that in the interview and they definitely choose teams um, and people that know how to work together to work um, with other people. Um, I saw that in our class in New York, I mean, most of the people were know how to communicate with other people, work together, were team players. So I think in accelerators, it, it's important to be a team player and to have a team that you can show um, that work well together. Um, the second thing is to have a vision of your company. Um, I think even if you don't really know how the life of the company will change and you have those kind of vision in your head for the next few years to know that it's super important because so even if it's an early stage investment it's still investment and they look at you as not just as a mentor but also as as a as VC as a venture capital and this is why it's so important to show them your idea even if it's going to change in the next few years even also maybe also in the next few months but to show that you thought about it, you did your research on the market, you have uh, a business model in your head, you have the, the right customers that you want to help and give the solution for. Maybe you have a demo or prototype, show them the direction of the company and the vision, not currently, for the future to come. Um, I think it's this is a, a big tip that I got in the beginning. That's great. And I think my biggest takeaway out of all that was to show them the idea, even if you're going to pivot and even if you're going to come up with a new idea, be clear with like your idea. That's the kind of main thing. So my next question to you is, so what was the scrappiest thing that you and the team have done to build out Boost? And yeah, what could you share on that? End? <laughs> it's a funny question. Um, I think, uh, well, back, back in the days, I think uh, when we just started the ideation, um, our main customers are Amazon sellers people that sell on Amazon Marketplace, business owners. And uh, we didn't know how to, to reach out to them and talk to them that easily. They were super busy. Most of them are business owners and we didn't have a lot of marketing budget to spend. What we did actually flew to New York and we printed on t-shirts a title, Are You an Amazon Seller? with a small QR code for them to, to picture that and answer some questions. Um, and we walk in the Times Square, all the team with our black t-shirts and search for Amazon sellers um, in New York um, with a crowded place. Uh, also, we went to subways and try to uh, make people, you know, laugh and, and to take videos of our t-shirts. So uh, it was a great, great experience because we saw, you know, we met people face to face. And I think it's, it's better. We, we met some of them there. We met some of um, people that actually sold on Amazon, not a lot. But actually after that, after this experience, I took some pictures and uploaded them to LinkedIn, another social media channel. And then I got a, a real traction. People saw that and um, like this because it was funny, but also actually sign up to our, um, to our website. And then we talk with them as customers and we continue the conversation. But for me, like being this, you know, creative, create something from nothing uh, was a great experience because you can reach out to your customers in different ways, um, more the traditional ways of like email them, find them on social LinkedIn and send them some messages trying to get their attention. But I think getting the attention in a different way was important to me from from the beginning. So it was a great experience. And um, even now when we have customers in the pipeline and we have, you know, um, the platform and everything is working, we have budget to spend, even though I want to do it again and again, I think to be creative and try to do it like that again. Yeah, that's a really creative one. I haven't heard that one before. So yeah, kudos to you and the team for starting this new movement, I guess. And yeah, so my <laughs> question to you is, so who were the early believers in Boost and how did that help you guys? Um, the early believers, I think, were um, the mentors that we got from the Zelle Entrepreneurship Program, the first accelerator when we met. Several of our investors, the early stage investors, so they still have the connection to the company. But I think in the beginning, when you don't know nothing, you're just starting and searching and do the ideation. It's important to have somebody to help you. We had a lot of mentors from this network, so 
we got some mentors specifically to our industry um, and it was great because those mentors help us personally in terms of how to be an entrepreneur, but also professionally. We asked some professional questions about, about the market. We went to their places to see them work their day-to-day life and to observe them. So those mentors are were so important for us in the beginning, still in touch with us until now. Um, and I think our, our families as well. Both of my parents are, for example, business owners. They're experiencing and it's the, a problem of not having an, a next owner. So they, when they're going to retire, they don't going to have a next owner of their business. And this is also the problem that we solve in the company. So my family is super supportive in us. And I think as two business owners, my parents are, they experience it. So they, they have also the, the experience to tell me from a customer point of view. Um, and also the families of my other two co-founders. I think it was important. I think your family, if they're supporting you in the beginning, it's it's uh, so important because they are the people that know you the most. It's nice to see that. So I think mainly the mentors in the Zell program and our families. That's great. And I think you've mentioned a great point about getting some industry-specific mentors and how both of your parents are very supportive and that perspective of family as well. And how does that tie in to your like business and stuff. And so, yeah, those were all the questions that I've planned today. It was an absolute pleasure and honor chatting with you today. And uh, yeah, do share how the audience can connect with you. Yes, of course. Um, so my name is Gabo Zay. You can find me on LinkedIn, um, G-A-L-B-A-R-Z-I-L-A-Y. Um, and also Boost is the name of our company. Um, and mainly what we do, we help people uh, to buy and sell small, medium businesses. So if you're looking to sell your business, you're looking to buy a business, got connected to our platform, uh, www.boostme.com, uh, Boost with double S. Um, and you can, you can send us a message. You can sign up for the platform to try get a business valuation. You can sign up as a buyer. You can sign up as a seller. Or you can also DM me on LinkedIn if it's something that is interesting for you. I'm happy to chat and connect. I think a lot of our customers got connected to me by LinkedIn. So if it's something that you're really interesting to get to know. Awesome, awesome. So thanks so much for coming on the podcast once again and for your time and for sharing your experiences and all of the of stuff. 